Hello my dear students, good afternoon. Today we will discuss about Heisenberg uncertainty principle and we will have some one mathematical relation here and afterwards in one particular class we will do numericals on both the de Broglie wave concept as well as this Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Okay and do you remember that uh, de Broglie wave length how to calculate lambda is equals to h by mv. Okay. And if wave in phase circumference 2 pi r is equal to n lambda. Am I given? And from that we had one agreement with Bohr's atomic model. 2 pi the triangular momentum mvr is equal to nh by 2 pi. Okay. Now come to this Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Actually this principle was given to find, to find position of electron and momentum of electron. Can we know the position of electron and momentum of electron exactly at one particular time? Can we find yes or no? Means he said no. So what he said, it is impossible to determine. It is impossible to determine exact position and exact momentum of electron simultaneously and accurately. So what he said, I will write here. What he said? It is, it is impossible to find, impossible to give otherwise, exact, exact position and momentum. Momentum I given no momentum means what? The mass into velocity. Momentum. It is impossible to find or determine or give all this you can say. It is impossible to determine exact position and momentum of electron simultaneously. Okay. Simultaneously and accurately. Simultaneously and accurately, we cannot give, he said. Who said? Heisenberg. What is it? I repeat. It is impossible to determine exact position and momentum of electron simultaneously and accurately. But you can give what is the uncertainty. So why we cannot find? Because electron is moving with a high speed in circular orbits and that particular electron is not only revolving in one particular orbit that is jumping from one orbit to other orbit actually. Suddenly what happens if a particular ball, if a cricket ball if you uh, take, you know the path means it's not moving uh, in a particular time or it's a one time here in uh, ground one time another like that it's not possible so electron is not like that cricket ball is what that is moving in one particular direction only so that you can say its position means where it was pitched and what is its speed you can say momentum is nothing but mass into velocity speed only but whereas electron is not like that electron is jumping from one orbit to another orbit constantly it is jumping. We cannot uh, say exactly electron is present here. But you can say uncertainty. Getting what I am saying? I'm I am running with the same speed and I am running with one direction only. I can say my speed and I can say my position also. But I am changing my path. Certainly you cannot say both simultaneously and accurately. Both means what? Position as well as momentum. But he said, we can find uncertainty. So what he said, uncertainty, uncertainty in position and, and what? Uh, momentum. Momentum can be, can be find, he said. Can be what? Find, he said. Who said? Mr. Heisenberg. Uncertainty in position, he used one word, delta x. And uncertainty in momentum is delta p. Okay. 
ओके सो डोंट थिंक पी मींस पोजीशन मोमेंटम इज पी आई टोल्ड नो सो लाइक दैट सो ही गिवन वन मैथमेटिकल रिलेशन टू नो द अनसर्टेनिटी इन पोजीशन एंड मोमेंटम एक्चुअली सो व्हाट ही वाज गिवन डेल्टा एक्स इनटू डेल्टा पी इज ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू h 4 पाई h by actually n pi given n pi okay but this uncertainty also can be find up to fourth order bit that's why later on it was converted into mathematical relation delta x into delta p is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi this is the most important uh, equation for us heisenberg uncertainty equation is is what means delta x into delta p is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi so what is delta x here i was written there delta x is uncertainty uncertainty in position and delta p is uncertainty in momentum momentum actually okay for solving numericals you can take like this delta x into delta p is equal to h by 4 pi for solving numericals what is the meaning of this if delta x if position is known that means momentum is unknown it will become infinity if position is known then delta x will become zero why position is known there is no uncertainty you know where i am means in what room i am sitting or at what at what what particular place i am standing if you know my position is known certainly my position my uncertainty is zero so if position is known i will write here if position is known then then delta x will be zero and delta p will be infinity very very important if position is known means momentum cannot be known that's why infinity see here you substitute delta x is zero position is known then delta x is zero delta x is zero so substitute here 1 by 0 so delta p will be infinity understanding because delta p is equals to h by 4 pi into delta x position is known certainly delta x is zero so what happens 1 by 0 infinity so if position is known then delta x is zero and delta p is infinity that is if position is known and excuse me if position is known then uh, uncertainty of position is zero and uncertainty in momentum will be infinity and the second one is reverse actually if if momentum is known what is known if momentum is known then what happens delta x will be infinity and delta p will be zero uncertainty in momentum will become zero actually so if position is known one thing if momentum is known another thing here can you remember this if momentum is known there is no uncertainty in momentum okay so please note it down all these things are very important okay have a screenshot and write down all these things okay now i will give you one more formula for this okay what is that same if so you have momentum formula you only can write what is the formula actually delta x into able to see here otherwise i will arrange both i will write here otherwise what here see if here delta x and delta p is e greater than or equal to otherwise greater than or equal to h by 4 pi you know the momentum means what is momentum momentum means mass into velocity right mass into velocity mv it is mv and what is delta p therefore m into delta v 
because mass is not uncertain that's why i'm not writing delta m here so p is equals to mv delta p is equals to m into delta v understanding here so i can substitute this here correct in place of delta p if i substitute what i will have therefore therefore i can write delta x into m into delta v is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi what i did understood instead of this delta p i was substituted m into delta v therefore you can write like this now delta x into delta v is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi m so this is for electron no so what is m don't ask me mass of electron what is m mass of electron h everywhere same planck constant h means planck constant okay it's not height like that h means planck constant in atomic structure chapter completely so what is h planck constant value mass so remembering for solving electrons sorry sir for solving numericals mass of electron and h should be in same units same units in the sense SI units or CGS units. Suppose uncertainty in velocity, asking in centimeter per second. Then H value should be in ergs and mass of electron should be in grams. If meter per second, H value in joules and that mass of electron in kg. Do you know the differences in SI units and CGS units? Okay, like that we have to consider for solving numericals. Don't worry, I'll give you numericals so that you will have more clarity. Okay, so this is about uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle actually. Okay, so afterwards what we will do, sir, now means we will discuss about the uh, quantum. We will discuss about quantum numbers. So Heisenberg said it is impossible to determine exact position and exact momentum of electrons simultaneously and accurately. so if you see atomic structure from beginning itself first our discussion is about electrons protons and neutrons afterwards how where electrons are present where protons present where neutrons present afterwards our study is about electrons because in nucleus protons and neutrons are present so no question about protons and neutrons and moreover in chemical reactions protons and neutrons are not involved so who are involving electrons are involving in chemical reactions so later on they studied where electron is present and how many electrons are present in a particular shell or sub shell or degenerating orbitals afterwards which electron involve in reaction means which electron can be removed or if electron added then where electron will be added means in what shell electron can be added of course i was given removal of electron or addition of electron always done at outermost shell i was given outermost shell means last shell so our discussion is about electron right now so finally the complete atomic structure now turns towards electron why because everything reaction chemical reactions is due to loss of electron or gain of electron or sharing of electron so what is the exact position of electron and the particular movement of electron we can understand everything study of electron we can understand in these quantum numbers there are four quantum numbers few people was uh, uh, i mean studied already because i was given these quantum numbers as basics now also i am just recapping all these things please go through this okay and uh, the particular old students also please try take it like a revision don't feel bored and don't avoid also because you will you can recollect all these things and new students listen carefully okay this is my request please go through all those things and how many quantum numbers are there four quantum numbers how many quantum numbers four quantum numbers so we will discuss uh, first <coughs> principal quantum number actually principal quantum number 
represent with n why we are learning this to understand the particular uh, electron where it is and in a shell how many electrons are there in a particular uh, uh, particular shell how many uh, degenerating orbitals are there okay and what is the energy of shell all we can understand in this particular principal quantum number principal quantum number given by mr gore what was explained here we will understand here okay he was completely explained about shell okay so he was explained the uh, size and energy energy of uh, shell and represent with what principal quantum number represent with uh, small n okay and n takes the values 1 2 3 4 5 and so on like that so what is n here n is a shell number i told you already what is n shell number principal quantum number explains what size and energy of shell who was given niels bohr and it represent with what principal quantum number n why we are learning understanding so in this principal quantum number we are learning about a shell that's why we are learning about quantum numbers okay and n takes the values 1 2 3 4 n is principal quantum number and n is also called shell number n takes the values 1 2 3 4 no zero no negative values getting what i am saying uh, and one more thing n is equals to 1 the shell num shell name is called k shell actually if n is equals to 2 l shell actually these you know already in bohr's model also i was given but maybe you uh, you don't know about this size and energy was explained like that and moreover if you go for next azimuthal quantum number you don't know anything actually so that's why i'm explaining all these things and if n is equals to 3 n is equals to 3 m shall actually n is equals to 4 n shall actually like this and i was given one more thing actually shells consist of subshells those subshells are called spdf actually those spdf consist of degenerating orbitals what i said understanding shell consist of shell consist of subshells subshells consist of degenerating orbitals like if you are considering atom as building okay so building is like a atom so every floor is like a shells the first floor second floor third floor like that okay so in that what you have some shells you have like rooms in that like a divisions again degenerating orbitals understanding so how you classify where i am to find first of all i am in a particular building first thing so that's a shell actually where i am in a particular subshell so in a first floor i am or second floor i am that is a about subshell actually and with shell we won't get full clarity because i am in particular building in building in building sorry in building where i am in a, in a particular uh, first floor or second floor or third floor means first i am knowing where i am first floor or second floor or third floor means first i am knowing about shell second one i am knowing which floor sorry yeah first i am knowing what building means shell okay next one which floor that is subshell actually spdf like that next where i am in particular room which room there are in first floor there are uh, three rooms are there which room first room second room third room that is about degenerating orbital so i repeat don't uh, confuse what i am saying building is a knowing about shell floor is knowing about a subshell first floor second floor third floor like that and third one room is like a degenerating orbital okay what we give particular letter for subshells everything i will explain you have no need to why so first i given here principal quantum number given by bohr and size and energy explain represent with n 
n takes the values n is equal to one k shell n is equal to two l shell like that I was given and in Bohr's model only I was given one more in a particular in a particular shell number of electrons formula is what two n square and number of number of d degenerating degenerating orbitals number of degenerating orbitals in a particular shell formula n square so why i said in previous building like that understood so the building consists of flows i'm talking about shell building and subshell subshells consist of degenerating orbital what are degenerating orbitals i'll give you in magnetic quantum number you have no need to worry about that please try to understand okay so i was given this number of electrons how many present in a particular shell already 2n square formula and number of degenerating orbitals n square correct huh? k shell consists of how many electrons k shell means n is equals to 1 so 2 into 1 square so in k shell there are two electrons are present so this is about uh, what principal quantum number but principal quantum number from that we can understand only about uh, shells but we cannot understand what exactly uh, subshell okay electron is not only present in a shell electron the shell again classified into subshells those we don't know at the time of Bohr. so later on few scientists was given like this okay so first what we discussed here principal quantum number so next we will discuss about azimuthal quantum number actually okay Now we will discuss about the azimuthal quantum number. Azimuthal quantum number represent with L. Represent with what sir? L. Okay, small L. And given by whom? Sommerfeld. Now what we will discuss? Principal quantum number explained about shell. Okay, now is electron present only in shells? No, again shells classified into subshells. We don't know this at the time of Bohr actually. So that's why this quantum numbers given. What? Yes, shells consist of subshells. Given by whom? This Sommerfeld. And Sommerfeld said what? About the subshells and their shapes. Shapes of orbitals was given. This is a subshells or suborbits. I told you no shells. Shells are also called orbits. Like subshells or else we call suborbits and represent with L before only I return to avoid time wasting L takes the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that and if L is equal to 0 then the subshells what, what the subshell is called yes subshell simply the subshells are SPDF subshells I told now what are the subshells SP DF and D, F till that you remember, after F only alphabets, G and H like that. Okay, to fill this G and H, we don't have elements right now. We have uh, over around 120 elements and for the, uh, these many orbitals are enough actually. Okay, so, so after H what will come means, you know the alphabets, you can say after H what will come. Okay. So, for S subshell, what is the L value? Means, is the quantum number L value means 0. Please remember. For S subshell, L value is 0. For P subshell, L value is 1. For D subshell, L value is 2. For F subshell, L is equal to 3. For G subshell, L is equal to 4. G subshell, L is equal to 4 like that. These values are important. Because if you don't know these values, we cannot say energy of subshells. If you don't know energy of subshells, we cannot understand electronic configurations. So, these values are very important for us. A subshell L is equal to 0. Okay, I won't repeat. Sorry. Okay, now what we have to discuss in this azimuthal quantum number. That is our next thing. Okay, number of, <coughs> excuse me, 
नंबर ऑफ सबशल्स प्रेजेंट नंबर ऑफ सबशल्स इन द सेंस ऑफ डी जनरेटिंग वैल्यू और व्हाट इज द एल वैल्यू एल वैल्यूज इन ए पर्टिकुलर सबशल नो इन अ पर्टिकुलर शेल इन ए पर्टिकुलर इन ए पर्टिकुलर शेल नंबर ऑफ नंबर ऑफ द सबशेल्स नंबर ऑफ व्हाट सबशेल्स हाउ टू हैव दैट इज एल वैल्यूज वी यूज एल वैल्यूज आर फ्रॉम जीरो टू एम माइनस वन एक्चुअली बट अप टू फोर एंड सो ऑन लाइक दैट आई टोल्ड नो बट फॉर ए पर्टिकुलर शेल देयर इज अ एंड व्हाट इज दैट एंड यू नो एम माइनस वन सो एल वैल्यूज यू कैन यूज बाय यूजिंग दिस understood clearly so in a particular shell number of sub shells how many that we indicate with l values from 0 to n minus suppose in k shell how many sub shells are present we can understand from this 0 to n minus 1 suppose k shell example in k shell in k shell what is the n value for k shell n is equals to 1 or not tell me so what is the sub shell therefore so sub shell sub shells means it's a just 0 to 1 minus 1 that means 0 that is zero sub shells are present no that means sub shell present that is one s because l value is what l value remember forget about this in a particular shell who are the sub shells what are the sub shells instead of number of sub shells in a particular shell the sub shells are what are the sub shells l values we will use otherwise what will happen number of sub shells oh zero can a number of sub shells zero sir no l value you got zero zero means what i told you yes sub shell yes sub shell means what what sub shell uh, that s sub shell present in what shell k shell so that is one s why that is one s understood because this particular shell consists of sub shell with 0 to 1 minus 1 because 0 to n minus 1 i told na so sub shells are uh, sub shell in k shell in what shell in k shell it is 0 to 1 minus 1 means 0 l value you got 0 means what sub shell is present in k shell s sub shell is present okay so what that particular s sub shell 1s why we use 1s because in k shell i am asking so that s yes, sub shell present in first shell this is the meaning this s yes, sub shell present in first shell that is the meaning very very important to you so in k shell what is the sub shell means one s like that you can understand so written all these things so very very important sir please note down all these things and l values simply remember everyone what is the l value L values are from zero to n value, zero to n minus one. Simply remember, L values is equal to zero to n minus one. So this is very very important to you. Okay, so please take all these things. So in K shell, what is the sub shell you have? So L is equal to zero or sub shell? L is equal to zero. What sub shell? Yes, sub shell. L is equal to one. P. L is equal to two. D. L is equal to three. F sub shell. Like that, you remember. So I will write like this. What is the in K shell? First, I will write shell and L shell and M shell. Like that, I will write. And what are the L value? L value. And what are the sub shells like this? I will give you. Okay, so K shell means what is the n value? K shell means n is equals to one or not? N is equals to one. K shell. N is equals to two. L shell. N is equals to three. M shell like this. Got it? So what are the L values? I was given zero to n minus one. So in K shell, so for K shell, what are the L values? 
only zero. Correct? Zero to from zero to n minus one. Few people, what is the L value for particular L shell? L value means uh, is not a quantum number value for L shell means uh, sir the L value sir two minus one sir uh, one sir no starts from zero you have to count. L values are from from zero to n minus one. So n is equal to two L shell. So what are the sub shells here? That means what are the L values here? Zero and one. What is the m value for this uh, m shell l values? That is for this zero, one, and two. Very simple. Understanding? So for a particular shell, for a particular shell, what are the l values we are learning right now? Understanding, sir? So n is equal to one k shell. So in k shell, what are the n values? Only zero because zero to one minus one here. Understood? And for l shell, it is n is equal to two. Correct, sir? L shell n is equal to two. So what are the l values? Zero to two minus one. How to remember? A what number is there? Two. So one value less we have to consider. But starts from zero. Okay. Here n value is two, so l value is a zero and one. No need of formula. No need of this also. Zero to n minus one. Oh, n is equal to three. Okay, what are the l values? Starts from zero. Pakka starts from zero. Zero, one, two. Because n value is three. So one up to one value less we have to take. Getting what I am saying? Suppose n is equal to four, like this. N is equal to four. What are the l values? Zero, one, two, three, up to. We have to consider. So, how many? What is the n value? Those many l value. <coughs> excuse me. Total l values you will have. N is equal to four. L value is also four only. But up to three, why I am saying? Because starts from zero. One, two, three, four. Four values. N is equal to five. L values are five. But starts from zero. Ends with five minus one. Four. So zero, one, two, three, four. Up to. Means middle values also we we have to use if you want what to do so n value is three so our answer is starts from zero and ends with one value less but middle values also will come please remember this so that's why here zero one two so here n is equal to four and l values are zero one two three four why understood so starts from zero n is four so l values are up to Four minus one means three. So zero, one, two, three. All L values are possible in fourth shell. What is fourth shell means? That is M and N shell like that. Got it, sir? Now what is the sub shell? Particular sub shell. I told you this one. L is equal to zero. What sub shell? Yes, sub shell. Okay, yes, sub shell. L is equal to one. P sub shell. L is equal to two. D sub shell, L is equal to three, F sub shell, like this I given na. So what are the L values I given? Okay, this and this, N is equal to four, and what is the what are the L values I was given? Now what are the sub shells? Let's see. K shell, K shell. What is sub shell now? It is one S. This one we have to represent because here also S sub shell is there. Now, what is the difference between this S sub shell and and this S sub shell? You have to mention now. That's why we will write with the principal quantum number. So this is S and this S belongs to K shell. That's why we are using one S here. And here we use two S. L is equal to zero and two S. N value two na. So in L shell, N is equal to two and And L value is zero, then two S. For second shell, L value is one, so that is two P, two two P sub shell. So what sub shells are present in L shell? Capital L. L shell means two S and two P. Okay. Now here, what are the sub shells? Three S and three P and three D. Why we are writing three? Understanding? Because these are the sub shells in Third shell actually. Got it clearly? So what you observe 
every new shell consists of new subshell. See there is here, K shell consists of only S. L shell consists of S and P. Now, that means P is new here. And M shell consists of M shell consists of D. D new here. New subshell is coming for every new shell or not tell me. So, these are very very important for us. Understood sir? So, here what are the subshells possible here? Actually, you know, this is L is equal to S, <laughs> P and D, F. But in what shell? Fourth shell. Okay. 4S, 4P, 4D and 4F like that. So, these are the subshells present in N shell. Subshells present in shell we discussed. Got it sir clearly? So, in a particular shell. In a particular shell. What are the L values possible? Here we discussed. And here. And in a particular shell, what are the subshells we discussed? Why we written one understood? That means this S subshell is belongs to first shell. So 1S. So 2S and 2P are belongs to L shell. 3S, 3P, 3D belongs to M shell. So how to remember these L values understood everyone? So I am asking for fifth shell. Fifth shell means what shell that is called? K, L, M and O shell actually. What are the L values? Okay, very clear. What is the number here? 5. So starts from 0. Pakka 0. L values starts from 0. Okay, ends with means ending depends on shell. L value, ending value depends on what? Shell. So shell number is 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that we have. Okay, so what are the subshells present? 5s, 5 because fifth shell ma, 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f, 5g are possible here in fifth shell. Total how many L values or how many subshells means equal to shell number. So shell number is what? 5. So L values are 5. No sir, 4. No, starts from 0, no? count, uh, one, uh, count from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 values. Please note down all these things. So very, very important. So every shell we discussed, even 4 we discussed, even 5 we discussed here. Okay. Next, in a particular subshell, how many electrons are present? How many electrons are present? In a particular shell, how many electrons are present we discussed. In a particular subshell, how many electrons are present? And in a particular subshell, how many degenerating orbitals are present? Today I will give you. That is also very, very important. So, number of degenerating orbitals, orbitals present in a subshell. In a subshell, you have formula that is... 2L plus 1. Very, very important. Please note down this. Number of degenerating orbitals present in a subshell. 2L plus 1. Got it? And very important. Number of electrons present, present in, a, in a subshell. What is the formula? 4L plus 2. Otherwise, 2 into 2L plus 1. Option is given like this also. You can identify. That's why I given both. Or else. What is L? L you know. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Like that. 0 means S. 1 means P. 2 means D. 3 means F. 4 means G. Like that. So how many degenerating orbitals present in a particular subshell we can understand. Any subshell. Sir, yes, yes. This 1s and 2s have different uh, degenerating orbitals? No. But this belongs to 1s and this belongs to, sorry, this 1s belongs to K shell, this 2s belongs to L shell. But number of degenerating orbitals in any s will be same. 
But why we represent these numbers then? Because this S belongs to what shell to say we represent a 3S, 3P, 3D like that. Got it clearly? So please remember these two formulas. Number of degenerating orthos present in a subshell, 2L plus 1. Number of electrons present in a subshell, 4L plus 2. So in S subshell, how many degenerating orbitals are there? Means 2 into 0 plus 1. 2 into 0 plus 1. Very simple. Na? So tell, remember those formulas. So tell me, in S subshell, how many degenerating orbitals are present and how many electrons are present? It's very simple. In S subshell means, S means L value is 0. Na? So 2 into 0 plus 1 you can say. So that you can say how many degenerating orbitals are present in a particular sub shell. So I will write that one you now. So okay. So first sub shell. L value. What is this? L value. And I will write degenerating orbitals. And I will write number of electrons. So four columns are written. Sub shell. L value. Degenerating orbitals in a particular in what subshell number of electrons in subshell. Remember this everyone. So I am taking subshells now directly by using serial number 1, 2, 3, like that. 1 S subshell, P subshell, D subshell, F subshell, and G subshell. Enough to me. <coughs> What are the L values? L value 0, L value 1, L value 2, L value 3, L value 4. That's it. That's it now. Written many times. Here only you have. L is equal to 0 as subshell. Number of degenerating orbitals present in a subshell. What is the formula here I was given? Here formula given 2L plus 1. Number of electrons formula I was given 4L plus 2. Actually, formula is not required because number of degenerating orbitals means odd numbers will come. Means 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9 like that. Otherwise, if you want, you can use formula. L is equal to 4, 2 into 4. Otherwise, 0 will return on. Matter. So 4, L value 4. So 4 into 2. 2 4 is 8. 8 plus 1. 9. No need of formula. Just formula I was given. That's it. If you know the L values for a particular subshells, you can say number of degenerating orbitals. Got it clearly? So here, number of electrons in particular subshell means here. Take a formula 4 L plus 2. So L value 0. No? So in S subshell, how many electrons are there means you know L value. S subshell means L value 0. So, don't substitute this here. Hello. Understanding? L value we have to substitute. For S subshell, how many electrons are present means substitute L value for S. So, L value 0. So, 4 into 0 plus 2. That means 2 electrons are present. Okay. Now, here how many electrons present in P subshell means 6. You check once. L value is 1. 4 into 1 plus 2. 4 plus 2, 6. Correct? Huh? What are the number of electrons present in D subshell? So L value is 2 for D subshell. So 4 into 2 plus 2. That means 10 electrons are present. Here 14 actually. Here 18 actually. How? You know sir. Simple trick I'll tell you. 4 is the difference. Add 4. Add 4. 10 plus 4. 14 plus 4. 4 is the difference. You know, no need of these formulas also. But options given these, uh, what are the, uh, I mean, number of electrons present in a particular subshell, if options given like this, 4L plus 2. That's why I am giving formulas also. Otherwise, formulas not required. Number of electrons present in S subshell, if you know, you can say how many electrons are present in next subshells. Correct or not? 4 is the difference. So, S subshell consists of 2 electrons. So next P, 2 plus 4, 6, 6 plus 4, 10, like that you can say. Otherwise check by using this formula. Number of electrons in a subshell formula, 4 L plus 2. So for a D subshell, L value 2. So 4 into 2 plus 2, 10 electrons. Both are same. Getting. So these are very, very important. Please remember number of 
electrons present in a shell given, number of degenerating orbitals present in a shell given, number of degenerating orbitals present in a subshell given, just odd numbers remember, yes subshell consists of how many degenerating orbitals means one, p3, d5, odd numbers, that's it, number of electrons 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, 4 is the difference, please remember these two quantum numbers, one is principal quantum number, one is azimuthal quantum number and in our next class we will discuss about magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number.